Hey, good evening, everybody. How are you? Glad to see everybody here. This is Rick over here hitting on candlesticks. Very glad to have everybody here on this beautiful Sunday night. Hello, South Texas. Uh, South Texas, what part? What what city there in South Texas? Jared? San Antonio, okay. Austin, cool. I have a lot of family in Texas and have some family in Corpus. Okay. Um, again, good evening. Glad to every, see everybody here. Uh, Ed, Doug, glad you guys are here. Thanks. Uh, so let's, we're going to do a little fishing tonight, I guess. That's my title of it. And uh, we'll, I, well, here, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's click right here. Uh, first of all, um, the recording can be found in two places. Uh, I would say tomorrow late in the afternoon. Um, it can be found in my YouTube channel, which this is it. And I don't think it'll do you any good to click on that link. It will be uh, on the website. It will be a hot link, but for the recording, it's not a hot link. And it will also be on the website. We'll post where that'll be. <clears throat> One thing to remember is if you, you know, do us a favor. If you like our recordings, our videos, what we have to share, make sure you give us, you know, if you're, if you're a YouTuber, not everyone's a YouTuber, I understand. Heck, Ed up there doesn't even, he still has a flip phone. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> but if you're a YouTuber and you like the videos, make sure you click on the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Uh, here in the past, I've given away uh, memberships for those that uh, leave a post or something. And uh, who knows, may, may do that again here shortly. So keep that in mind. Um, tonight's topics, what we're going to look at is uh, the market, which I look pretty much at the SPY. And, uh, you know, something I'm calling tonight, we all love catching the trend, uh, resting, pulling back to support. And uh, that's simple, right? Yeah, we all know that's simple. Uh, we're all making millions of dollars, and well, not maybe not quite as simple as we is what it sounds. But we'll, we're going to look at some things, and then tonight uh, we're going to look at two of my favorite chart patterns. You're actually going to maybe see. I think I might mention close to eight of them. Four, eight, yeah. But we're we're going to pretty much focus on two. Show you some charts. And uh, <clears throat> um, and then I'll look at some charts you have. If anyone has, uh, you know, time, any time remaining. So, all right, let's see. Any, and by the way, I welcome questions. So if anyone asks questions, don't be bashful. You know, type them in there. And then uh, we'll answer those questions. I do, for the, for the first, we're going to look, well, here. Here, we start looking at charts right now. And this is on a PowerPoint. Let me get through my PowerPoint, and then I'll bring up. Uh, live charts and we can look at live charts so um, so anyway well let's just get started here so okay uh, thanks Aaron appreciate it Aaron put the link out there um, so let's start with the spy uh, I think it's imp always important to take a look at what the overall market is doing uh, one reason I think and and I follow the I follow the S&P 500 ETF spy um, and about 80% of all stocks follow the S&P 500 or the ETF SPY. Uh, and um, so when I'm looking at charts, I like to make sure that the S&P or the SPY, I'll just refer to it from this, as a SPY from now on. Um, if I'm looking at long, I want to make sure that uh, the market is moving up. The market, by my definition, is the SPY. And uh, as long as it's trending up, I'm looking uh, at the longs. If it's trending up, I am not looking for shorts. Now, I may have a string of shorts that uh, I've gone fishing for, and they might be on the stringer, but they're still in the water, and they're not ready to come out into the frying pan yet. So um, until the market turns, I don't, I don't think it's healthy to say, you know what, we're bumping up against that uh, 280 mark up there, 
and we are bumping up against resistance. So you know what? I think I'm going to go short. I don't think that's a smart thing to do because that just pretty much is trying to predict tops. And I don't know, maybe for some folks, maybe Mike P there, just picking on you, Mike, because you're the last one there. Uh, maybe Mike P can pick tops and pick bottoms, things like that. But I find that I can't do it myself, uh, not, with any, not with any success. So uh, I try to tend to just simply follow the, uh, the charts. And right now the charts are still bullish. So um, I would have to, you know, as I shut down tonight, uh, I would have to be cautiously bullish going into the uh, market tomorrow. And of course, something may happen overnight where the futures just maybe get, get nasty. Who knows? Um, but right now the chart is still up. So I'm still looking uh, pretty bullish here. Do keep in mind we have resistance right in here. And there's another chart here that I watch. I've been watching it a lot more than I normally do. And that's this T2122 four-week new high, new low ratio. And, you know, here's the thing with, with the market. The market the market loves to go up. I mean, it does. I'm going to, well, we can, I'll just make that bigger, actually. The market loves to go up. I mean, that's what the whole market is about. It's about going up. Uh, you know, companies increase their business and shareholders make more money and it goes up, right? Well, funny thing about the market is it gets up so far and it starts looking, it just kind of peaks, kind of peaks down and says, holy moly, how did we get that far up without some sort of a pullback and test? Well, that's what happens and that's normal. And then it, it pulls back, it finds a testing area and then it just starts moving back up, providing the buyers are there pushing it up. If the buyers aren't there, then of course, it's just going to continue to move down. And what's, what, what I see right here is a whole lot of up. <laughs> whole lot of up. Not a lot of down. Not a lot of pullback and test here. And, and the pullback and testing is going on at this top level. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not making me bearish. This is just making me cautious. That is all. So uh, as long as we stay up here, I'm going to be uh, cautiously bullish. If we start pulling back, then we'll, we'll, we'll take that probably that bullish side off the table uh, until we get that bounce back up and we start making uh, a move back up, which could happen all the way down here. So I keep, I've been watching this a lot closer than I normally have. I usually don't watch it on a daily basis. And here lately, I've been looking at it every day. Usually it's a weekend thing. I look at it on the weekends uh, as I do some uh, market prep, trading prep for the following week. So uh, if you're able to pull up a on any chart package you have, uh, if you're able to pull up a four-week new high, new ho low ratio, you might take a look at that and see if you can get that chart up. It could be helpful to you a little bit. Let's see here. I'm just checking for any questions. News tonight is okay. That's all the news. Is something like the T2122 available somewhere for those that don't have TC2000? Steve, I, I don't know. As far as a charting package goes, TC2000 I've been using it since the day I started trading and I haven't used anything else. So I honestly don't know. Maybe if somebody else knows, um, and basically you're looking for the four week new high, new low ratio, maybe um, that could, uh, maybe if somebody could post that, uh, that might be helpful. Thank you. All righty. Uh, let's see. Thanks for answering the sound problems, guys. Appreciate it. Alrighty, let's move on to the next slide here. So, I have a little, <laughs> see my little star down here? That means this is a favorite chart pattern, is what that means. Um, outside of that, it's just kind of cool looking, I think. So, one of my favorite chart patterns is the RBB setup. I think a lot of people know that. Um, man, I'll tell you, over the years, this 
this chart pattern. And when I say chart pattern, I probably should use the word strategy as well, because really, as far as a chart pattern goes, all it is is a move, uh, a chart that is moved uh, from a downtrend and has moved back up and has crossed back over the 50 day simple moving average, which is this blue line. And my goal is to trade it up to uh, or in the direction of, I should say, uh, to the 200 day simple moving average, which is that solid red line right there. And so maybe that's more of a strategy because inside here, we're going to look for chart patterns. We're going to look, look for chart pattern. Whoops. I forgot that this doesn't get, this is a PowerPoint. There we go. So inside there, we're going to look for things like this right here. Um, yeah, let me do this. You see how we pop up and we start bouncing on the, on the T line. This is one of the chart patterns we're going to be talking about tonight. My, one of my favorite chart patterns um, is the T-line bounce. So we have a T-line bounce that's also an RBB. Um, and, and of course, inside there, we're going to look for, you know, candlestick signals uh, and breakouts like this right here. We've got a nice pop-up, a little doji, nice pop-up, doji continuation pattern, or what we might call a Fig Newton chart, chart setup. So when I see these things all put together and, um, you know, I'm looking for conditions. So we have an RBB setup. Let's do this. RBB setup. So check. We have a uh, T-line bounce check we have a doji continuation pattern fig newton check uh, also in here we have what we call a pop out of the box so i'm going to put a check so there's four conditions that give me a reason to maybe be a buyer four reasons to maybe be a buyer in this chart so um, also to let you know, and by the way, these are charts, uh, that I'm looking at. They're on my tomorrow's watch list among a few others we'll look at, uh, MO I'm already in MO and I've already sold some and now basically playing with the, uh, house money here, the house money. Thanks, Alan. Yes, Steve, the RBB is, uh, it, it's rounded bottom breakout and, um, Basically, what we're looking for is the um, price action to be trapped between the 50-day and the 200-day simple moving average. Here's the 50-day. Here's the 200. And I'm looking for things like uh, a trend. And you can see this trend here. There's the trend. You know, we're looking for uh, chart patterns, which I just showed you the Fig Newton chart pattern there. I just showed you the uh T-line bounce, that's a chart pattern to me. And the um, uh, pop out of the box, showed you that there. Uh, candle patterns, that would be this Fig Newton pattern right here. And then overall, just watching price action. Put all those things together, and I think you come up with a pretty good, pretty good, um, pretty good chart pattern. Uh, a pretty well-rounded way to make money. So here's the thing. So how do we find these charts? See, that, that's one of the things. Well, here, here's a way to do it right here. And, uh, you know, this may or may or may not be for everybody, uh, but this is how I find it. This is how I do it. Uh, I know quite a few other people do it this way as well. And the, the chart patterns we're going to be looking at is right here, the RBB uh, right there, and where is the uh, my T-line bounce right here? Now you might be noticing that says 15 minute. That's because it's making a 15 minute high, but it's a daily RBB. So when it when the print uh, it started to make a 15 minute high. So so anyway, I I look for um, you know charts. Um, 
that are, are making that chart pattern, um, when, when they start coming up on the, on the uh, scanner here, then I know to go look for it because I'm looking for that particular chart pattern. Uh, in this case, we're talking about the T-line bounce and the RBB. And here's the eight total that I really, really, really follow. Um, and you can see how this, here's a different view of the chart. You can see how you've got that nice pop out of the box right here. And then it just popped out uh, with a nice bullish price action. And we're, you know, we're looking for that uh, price to move up higher right in here on this MO. So you might be, you might be wondering, well, why am I showing you this now uh, if we were already in it? Let me go back one slide because there's still a lot of room up here. And this chart is not going to go straight up. Charts just don't do that. Um, you know, we're going to move up. We're going to pull back. And it's going to give another opportunity. That's what I would suspect. I can come over here and I see a little bit of resistance right in there. So I, I could see us moving up maybe a little bit more than was for that pullback. And that might give us um, that reason to buy. Uh, Jay, right there is what I just pointed out to you. Uh, another re another uh, way to enter the chart, and I like this a lot, I like to come over here and, and look for support. There's support, right? And you see we broke out. So now what I'm looking for is bullishness, consolidation, and bullishness in this area right there. As far as an exact entry, you're going to find that uh, something I do in trading is very rarely worry about um, some special entry, you know, like, what are we talking here? Let me move this. You know, 51.50 is where we close. So, you know, $51.29. You'll see that, you'll find that I never go there. Um, if I can make 30, 40, 50, 60 percent uh, up to that 200-day simple, I'm, I'm just not too interested in trying to catch some you know, some magical entry point. So what, what I truly do is, is, you know, I'll draw a box like that and then I'm looking for an entry uh, on some consolidation on, on this chart. Uh, an example would be, look at that move right there. So where would we enter that chart? Well, here we are. When, when you have a pop out of the box and you have, uh, so pop out of the box, check. You've got support, check. You've got a very nice bottom down here where we have a candle here, and then we're going to draw a line up to that low. That low, it might be kind of hard to see because I've got all this art on it now, but right there. And this chart pattern right here is a inverted head and shoulders. So I'm going to put a check right in here. So I would look at that and say, you know what? That is a good risk trade, good risk reward trade. Now, because it is an RBB, we tend to like to let it get over the 50 day simple. And all through here, it is not over the 50 day simple. Personally, what I might do is maybe buy a quarter of a position, a third of a position, sometimes a half. And then when it does break out, I will add to it. And then I can start trading that RBB uh, strategy here. So now that it is over the 50 day simple, it is an RBB strategy. So now we, whoops, we can draw a box around it and just simply look for, um, you know, inside that box. We want to see, uh, oh, for instance, lo look at the breakout here and look at the doji. So would the doji be a buy? I think so. Absolutely. It's still above support and it's below the previous day's high. That's a sweet inside day and the risk reward is low. Um, the breakout would have been a buy on Friday. Hmm. Now I'm not a big buyer on Friday, so might not have in, in, in real trading. I don't think I would have bought it Friday. Um, I would have probably wait till Monday and watch for that pullback. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for asking. Uh, what's a Fig Newton? Fig Newton is when you have a, uh, a green body, a green body, and you have a, in my case, I use black and white, but I'm going to draw this green and, and red. You have a bullish body, and then you have a red body, and then you have a 
green body. And it does not have to be like this. It could be like this. Um, it could be, you know, you're, you're basically looking for the, for the green, red, green. So you've got bullishness, you've got the bear stepping in or profit uh, taking here, and then you've got the bull stepping back in is what you have. So that's what that is there. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see here. So, so anyway, uh, here's a different view of the chart. These are using my T-line bands right here. Uh, but here's a scanner that might give me that alert on the chart. Here's another one, uh, Apple. So let's take a look at Apple. Uh, Apple is an RBB setup because it is above the 50 day simple moving average after making a downtrend. And you can see here, it's got a, um, pop out of the box setup and we have support right in there. I mean, all those candles right there are giving us support. We've also, we've come down and we've made a um, nice little, little bottom right here. I like bottoms that are like this, nice rounded uh, bottoms in here. And it's, it's popped up for a higher high or for a high, a higher low, higher high, higher low. And that's what it's doing. It just keeps making those higher highs and higher lows. So it's made a high and it's actually made a higher low right now. And it's working on that higher high. Once again, the target direction for me is only right here. I'm not saying that it can't go up here. It certainly can. That just wouldn't be my trade. My trade would be from here to here. And then from there, I would reevaluate and maybe sell it, maybe not, uh, maybe sell it and let it, let it jump through all the hoops, the, you know, let it jump through all the 200 SMA hoops. And then I might buy it again something like that. And again, we're simply, we're simply looking for uh, price to be trapped between the 50 day simple and the 200 day moving averages. And then we're looking for uh, trend support, chart patterns, candle patterns, and price action. You put all this stuff together and that's how we come up with a trade. Once again, you can flip through hundreds and hundreds of charts or you could take a look, uh, something like this. And this is what I use right here. Um, when I start seeing, uh, the ticker symbol come up, uh, there's that MO when I, you know, when I start seeing those come up, then what I do is I go look at the chart. Uh, just because they pop up here, it doesn't guarantee that they are trades to be traded. You still have to do your, your due diligence and your own trade work. And, this does not tell us that the chart pattern is absolutely perfect. So you, like I say, you still have to do your own uh, chart work with it, but this is how I fish for these charts right in here. Let's see, I've got a couple questions. I better answer these. Um, well, let's see. The middle must uh, be engulfed by both. No, Steve, it's not. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a bullish day a profit taking day, bullish day. That's all it is. Careful not to make too much of it. It's an up, down, up is all it is. Um, it, it's like right here. The, see these three bars? That, that's, that's a fig Newton right there. It's a green day. It's a red day. It's a green day. That's all. Uh, again, be careful not to make too much of that uh, because we are treading on the hard right edge. What's more important is how we got there. That's the most important thing. How did we get there? Did we get there with some sort of a trend? Yes. Are we off the bottom? Yes. In this case, is it an RBB? Because that's what we're looking at. Answer is yes. Does it have room to go up? The answer is yes. So it's, again, it's, you know, focus where focus needs to be. And it's, it's the overall picture, not one simple little thing. And especially especially never, never should it be the super hard right edge. Not ever should we be focusing on that. Um, you, and text just wrote that Fig Newton is not a holy grail. You're, I totally agree with you. Absolutely. Uh, what it is, is a reason to consider the chart from a price action standpoint. But the question is how you got there 
like I said, is the big thing uh, we want to look out. Let's see, Mike P is asking, how often to use this setup when the markets have been bullish for some time? Um, the truth is, Mike, uh, the market can be bullish for 19 years if it wants to. Um, I'm going to trade it bullish until the chart tells me not to. And even though we're up against resistance right now on the SPY, um, even though that T2122 chart is way overbought, I'm still going to be bullish because the chart is still saying bullish. Nothing has said to be bearish yet. Keep in mind that I don't try to pick tops. So there, it, there very well may be a day where the market turns bearish. I might be in some long trades that I just might get bit on a little bit. But I can quickly turn on some short trades, make up the difference. What I don't want to do is predict that we're going to fail tomorrow. We, I don't want to predict that. Support, re resistance, let's go back over here. Resistance is only worth its salt providing price action agrees. Otherwise, it's just rotten tomatoes. That's all it is. Support is the same way. Support is exactly the same way. It's rotten tomatoes until price says it's not rotten tomatoes. So price is truly the way to go. Uh, I, I, you know, follow price, and we just don't want to predict from there. All right. Let's see, we already did Apple here. We did that. We did that. Let's go do this one right here. So here's Procter & Gamble. Um, this is not an RBB setup. This is just simply a trending chart, and, and it's a T-line bounce. That's what I want to show you here. It's a T-line bounce. So a couple of things we want to uh, keep in mind. Here's what we're looking for. Uh, trend, arrest, or pullback to support. We want to make sure there's a chart pattern in there. Uh, we want to make sure there's a candle pattern. And for those that don't know, there is a difference between a chart pattern and a candle pattern. There is a difference. And we want to make sure price action is working out well. So as I look at this chart, <clears throat> I'm going to draw a line right here over. So we had a breakout. And I'm going to actually try to make that a little thinner and I'm going to make it a little lower just so we can see what's going on right here. See how we broke out. We came back and tested the T line. That's a T line bounce. I mean, if you're looking at a trade, this, and this would be, this would be actually above my actual stop, uh, where that blue line is. So if I bought it here and it kept going down, I would have a little bit of room in here yet before I get stopped out. But you can see how it just kept going up. We got a doji up here pulled back, but it's creating that T-line bounce. It's also creating a chart pattern that, again, we're not focusing on tonight, but nice little pop out of the box. Pop out of the box is simply a, a chart that has been rallying up one day, it could be two days in here, and then it starts consolidating nice and tight. Nice and tight, and that's nice and tight. You may see flags, you may call them flags, and some of these may be flags. Um, nice little, you know, little little right side wedges pulling in there. Um, that's what we're looking about. We're looking for a rest or a pullback, a shallow pullback. I don't like deep pullbacks. Uh, and a rest to me automatically says that's shallow. Uh, but a pullback, just slight little pullback. This would be a, an easy little pullback. So as I look at this, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're inside that box area. Let me draw that again. I'll see if I can draw a little smaller this time. There we go. So this right here is a buy inside here or on a breakout. Maybe even that breakout and let it test a little bit. Everybody, every trader's a little bit different here. Everyone's a little bit different. So uh, maybe you're a buyer here. Maybe you're a buyer right away on the breakout. Maybe you're a buyer on the pullback. I don't think any one person, uh, one way you trade is the right way to trade. Um, if you want to get into right and wrong, I think there is a right way to trade, and I think there is a wrong way to trade. If you're making money, well, you're doing it the right way. If you're not making money, you're not doing it the right way. You just have to find the way that works for you.
Everybody fishes different. Some people fish on the bank. Some people fish in the water. Some pe people fly fish. Some people use casting lures. Uh, some people use a big net. Some people use a stick of dynamite. You know, fish what work on the way that it works for you, but you have to catch fish. And if you're not catching fish, then you have to go through the education, the training, until you learn how to catch those fish. So, let me see here. What moving average is the T-line? Thank you, everybody, for answering. It is the eight exponential moving average. Rick, do you consider volume uh, in your trades? Not normally, no. There are a couple exceptions to that rule, but normally, no, I do not. I don't trade volume. I trade, uh, I trade uh, candlesticks. And what I'm looking for in a candlestick is uh, a stick, <laughs> A stick, and then as long as we as long as we stay with inside that stick, or maybe I'm looking at uh, a a pair of sticks, all right, maybe a pair of sticks. Now I don't know if I would wait till it got down there, but Beck, let's just stick with one stick. So if it pulled back, I'm still okay with this chart. What I don't want it to do is get below that stick. What I do want it to do is break out of that stick, the top one here. So basically what I'm, I'm trading is sticks. And I have never ever figured out how volume plays into that. Now I'm a short-term trader, okay? I'm a trader that I'm gonna look, because I'm trading options now, I'm, I'm, I'm a trader that looks for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50%, 60% trades. And it can happen sometimes in one day, uh, most times in, you know, three to five days, sometimes longer. So based on that, I, I truly have never come up with a reason why I should pay too much attention to, to a uh, volume when what I'm really watching is the sticks here. That that's what I'm watching. Now, I don't need volume to tell me <laughs> that I better pay attention to this chart right here. Um, I don't need volume to tell me that. I just, I just know that what that stick says and what it means. So, so I hope that was helpful. That may not be true for everybody, but it just works for me. What's my favorite fish? <laughs> um, I probably have two favorite fish. One is uh, uh, a halibut, and the other is an Arctic grayling. Uh, those are probably my favorite fishes. Rick, do you use the power line? <laughs> on volume instead of moving averages uh, for analysis. Um, power, the power line, do you mean, well, you can't see it, so you can't, you can't know it's there unless you see that right there. That red line there, I call that the power line. All that is is the um, linear regression line. I think it's over 150 days. I'm just trying to get a straight line across there. That's all I'm trying to do, I, I, if that's what you mean there. Um, if you, um, yeah, if you mean something else, please ask it, if you would. Um, let's see here. Uh, Bob A., would you say that a cup and handle pattern uh, is more bullish pattern uh, than just an RBB? Uh, I'll tell you what, Bob, if you'll hold that, let me see how many slides I have. If you'll hold that and ask me that question later, we will look at APHA. Right now I'm looking at a PowerPoint. I can't switch to the uh, back and forth, okay? But if you please post that again. Uh, what about topping tails? How do you treat them uh, as you come up uh, from below? That's a great question, Z. Okay, here's, here's a quick little candlestick class, I guess. Very quick. Very, 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 very quick. Um, candlestick signals are extremely short term. Um, you, I, I will die of old age before anybody could ever convince me that a stock um, rallied you know, month after month after month because of a big bullish engulf down here. You know, chart moves up, 
moves down. They all move down a little bit. Chart moves up. And then I'm just going to get crazy here, okay? It goes up forever. Trust me, this candlestick did not cause that reversal. Believe me, it did not. Candlesticks are extremely short term. So that's why they, that's why candlesticks are so popular in a swing traders world. Swing traders are typically overnight to, I don't know, 10, 15 days, maybe five days. Sometimes, um, some people look at swing trades three weeks. Maybe I can buy that, but keep in mind they are short term. So you mentioned topping tails. Here's Procter and Gamble. And look at that right there. Would you call that a topping tail? Boy, I sure would. <laughs> would you call that resistance? Boy, I sure would. You bet. What did that candle tell us? It said, hold on to your britches because we're going to see a lower low. And sure enough, that's what happened right there. Now I can make that statement. I'm going to do this one more time. We have a double top and we don't have to have a double top, but we definitely have a high wick. What does that candle tell us? We are going to see a lower low. I will take that bet every single time. I will lose once in a while, but I will be very rich by taking that bet. So look what happened to it. it all it did was pull back to what? It basically pulled back to support. That's what it did. Happened to be the T-line as well, or it pulled back to the T-line and happened to be support. Whichever side of the fence you're on. Pulled back and now look at Procter & Gamble. So if you were fearful of this, you lost out on a bucket load of money. This is not 100%. Now everybody, do you do realize, don't you, that stock trading is about probabilities. It's not being about not being about right, being right 100%. There's no such thing. It's about probabilities. So we're trading high probabilities. That's what you want to look for. High probability trade patterns, trade setups. And when you do that, then you put the odds in your favor. So was, I, I hope that was helpful there. Or even Apple. Um, uh, again, we can go back and look at Apple when I look at the charts. Make sure you ask me that question, okay? Uh, let's see, I use volume, not necessary to get in and out of a trade. Uh, okay, thanks, Bill. All right. Okay, so let's, what do we have now? What do we have here? Procter & Gamble. Oh, so the next slide now, there it is. So the next, size, next slide here is uh, Procter & Gamble, and you can see Procter & Gamble started showing up on the, the scanner. And I mean, I don't know what time of day this was right here. I, I should have put the time when I clipped these. These are all clips from Friday and it was different times during the day when I clipped a few, few of these um, uh, charts here. And you can see it's a T-line bounce right here. So I look at this and if honestly, if yesterday, if Friday wasn't, if this was not Friday that this popped up, say it was a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, more than likely I would have gone long uh, on Procter & Gamble on this candle, maybe even on this candle here. But because it was Friday, I mean, let's face it, you had the China thing, you know, being talked about. It's Friday and all. Eh, I don't think anyone had any interest in, in being very long going into Friday, uh, especially with the SPY up against resistance. So, uh, but if this, you know, here's, so here's Monday. If Monday's charts, Monday market turns out to be fairly decent, this is a buy in my book. Um, I can't say where it's going to be Monday, so you have to do some of your, your own due diligence here. Uh, but right now, I would say above those highs uh, is what I would look for an entry. And I would draw a line down here and uh, probably anything above those, those lows. I can't give you an exact price because I can't do that on, on the PowerPoint here. But So this is above 98 right in here, and that's below a uh, hundred right there. Let's see. Um, I'm just reading some of the questions here. Did I miss anything? Mike P. I don't have TC 2000. Do you have a lecture that allows that shows how to set it up? Uh, we do. Yes, we absolutely do, Mike. And and you know, and I, I'm. TC2000 is not a hard thing to learn. It's easy. It really is. So, 
So again, you know, I'm going to look at these alerts to uh, get me looking at a chart. So here's another chart, WY. Here's one with a topping tail. WY has been rallying up. So let's put that rally up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that topping tail and just go look at that. I mean, is that a big surprise? Is that a really big surprise? Shouldn't be. So we've pulled back and we've pulled right back to support right here. And now we've got a nice J hook in the making. Here is our little uh, Fig Newton chart, um, our chart pattern right here. And uh, so, you know, I'm thinking this is a buy inside this box here. Or you might even want to wait till it actually breaks out of uh, this area right in here, right there. Uh, so that's one that I'm uh, considering uh, for next week. And, oh, I wanted to go back here. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I actually know some people that use their horoscope and start star and the stars to trade by. Maybe, you know, this is the nicest thing I can say. This is the nicest thing I can come up with to say. Everything else is not so nice. Uh, maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I don't know. Personally, I think if we, uh, if, if we look for our setups that we want, if we know what setups we want, if you don't know, you need to know, uh, things like T-line bounce and, and uh, um, pop out of the box maybe. Um, the RBB, I think, is a magnificent chart setup. Um, the, what we call the 3-8 trap, the Fig Newton um, I love morning star signals. You notice that I have a, a morning star signal alert here, right here. Uh, I love morning star signals. Morning star signals are a lot like the Fig Newton. Uh, but if you if you can if you can find those exact setups, and um, you know how to read them, then it really puts the probabilities in your favor. It puts the risk reward in your favor, and that is very 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 helpful uh, so so anyway um, beat the crowd beat the crowd let me see here somebody's PMing me I'll have to answer that later um, Moto retired from uh, WY cool maybe give us some inside information uh, something like that who knows okay so this is actually the last slide right there actually the last slide And let me, okay, let's see here, uh, Mike P. Doug has, yes, Mike, uh, Doug does have a great video, absolute great, I made a few videos actually on TC2000, yes, the moon cycle actually does work, I'll, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, <laughs> Do you look to enter with the same setup on a 15-minute chart? You know, kind of interesting that you said that. Um, up until kind of recently, the answer would be no. Um, but something has happened uh, recently. And for, for years, I've used a... Um, a scanner to scan for stocks, an automated uh, live scanner. And up until recently, the what, what I was using never had the ability to alert uh, for daily and 15 minute at the same time or daily and actually whatever time frame you want to uh, uh, alert for. And uh, the live trading alert scanner does that. In fact, you'll, I don't know if you guys can read it, if your screen's big enough here. Um, you'll notice that uh, here is the T-line bounce and you see the 15 minute high. That means it's uh, making a 15 minute high. Um, I could set it up, which I have some scans that are a daily, say a daily chart pattern, but they're looking for a 15 minute or I like an hourly, an hourly 
uh, J hook, maybe things like that. Um, here's the morning star on the daily, but I have it giving me a new high on the 15 minute chart. So, uh, up until recently, I didn't have the capability of doing that. And I find it tedious to bounce through hundreds and hundreds of stocks looking for, um, you know, set up on multiple time frames, uh, and this here will do that. So to answer your questions, um, recently, yes, I have been looking for uh, the intraday setup. So an example might be is, uh, let's see here. So uh, we pop up on the daily. What, you know, we came from wherever, but we pop up on the daily, and then we pull back a little bit, and you know, we have a wick here now. So now what I might do is watch that intraday chart, the 15 minute chart usually for something like this. And the 15 minute chart is doing something like this right here. You know, it's showing this pop up like that. And the 15 minute chart is showing that J hook. And when I can see it start to turn and then I get alerted, you know, on, on these charts here that are set up that way, I can go look at them and by golly, by gum, they uh, kind of like cookies and cream sometimes. Absolutely. Not every time. Um, nothing is perfect in this world, but sure does, sure does help. Sure does help. Okay, let's put this away and let's look at some charts. So, uh, can you please share the formula uh, for your volume versus average in TC? Bob, I cannot because I don't have one. Volume versus average. I, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, and I, I don't think I have one. Maybe I'm not understanding exactly what you're, what you're asking, but let's see. Bob A is asking, would you say a, there we go. Would you, let's thank you for posting that back there. I appreciate it. A P H A. All right. The question is, would you say that uh, a cup and handle pattern is more bullish pattern than the than just an RBB? Well, you know, the thing is, you're you're maybe you are, maybe you you're not. When I read a question like that, when someone I hear somebody say something like, "Do you think this pattern is better than that pattern?" It tells me that you might be looking for the best setup. There is no such thing as the best setup. There is a such thing as, as putting all your ducks in a row. Putting all your ducks in a row might be something like this. Um, you've got a cup and handle. By the, by the way, this is not an RBB, just FYI. Um, you've got a cup and a handle here. You have a uh, bullish piercing candle here. And let me change some colors here so we and make that a little bigger. Plus, we have a J hook set up right here. Uh, what else do we have? Plus, we have uh, broken out, uh, looks like the downtrend line here, the chart that I have up anyway. Um, so, based on this, now let's clean that chart up. And I'm actually going to move over here to this chart. Based on that right there, that's a very bullish chart for me. Like I said, it's not an RBB, so we can't compare the two, but it's not a matter of one chart pattern. It's putting several together. It's, it's about putting as many conditions together as possible to give you a reason to buy the chart. So, by the way, I, that's looking pretty nice, other than it's poked up into a little bit of resistance. So I just want to point that out. That doesn't mean it's a showstopper, because ultimately the target... I'm going to look at is up into this area. Um, I think there are some places along the way that are going to cause you some, some headache. Um, depending on what kind of trader you are will be depend on the size of the headache. But right now, this is looking pretty reasonable. In fact, I would uh, consider a trade if it is done like this. Uh, let's do this. Make that blue. So if we just tighten that line up right there, and then let's just run up like that right there. Anything in this area here or a breakout, a breakout with a test, boom. That might be 
uh, something to look at on this chart right here. A second, I need to, there we go. I hope that was helpful. Let's see here. Do you think, okay, before you buy a stock, do you see whether the stock is outperforming the S&P uh, or is in a stronger performing sector? Al, not really. No, you know, that, it, it took me a long time to figure this out. And I'm not saying it's right. It just works for me. Um, but I'm a short-term trader, all right? In fact, in fact, I generally trade for money more than anything. And what I mean by that is I don't trade with a lot of money. I just started a new account a year ago, and I've been building it up. And I don't spend a lot of money uh, on a position. So when I can, when I get to $300, you know, upward, I start thinking about some profits. Now, in some cases, I'll take it all. Uh, in the majority of cases, I prefer to take half and let the other half work out uh, a little higher. So when you think about it, how long am I in a position? Sometimes three weeks, yes. Uh, sometimes three days. So I have to think about what is my job here? My job is to make money. My job is not to draw a line and be, you know, stuck on that line. Why? I, you know, that's not my job. My job is to make money. And uh, so as I, as, as price starts moving up and it gets close to resistance or at resistance, I will start taking profits. Could this chart come way up here to $20? Sure it could. Is it going to do it without me? Well, it just might. <laughs> it absolutely just might. So, uh, but I'm happy making base hits. I have a, I have a YouTube video about base hits. Um, if anyone's interested and you haven't seen it, just go to the YouTube channel. Don't do it right now, please. And, um, take a look at that, that video I did on base hits. And, um, to me, that is the way to trade. So, so I guess to, to your question, uh, I'm going to have to go back and read your exact question now so I don't blow it. Can't find it. Uh, there we go. Uh, so there, I don't, I don't particularly follow stocks that are in the best performing sectors or uh, beating the S&P. Uh, you know, I, I just, I typically don't do that. I, I'm not to say I don't look at that sometimes, but I, I typically don't. So Steve's asking, do you think we test the 24th low? Steve, wouldn't that be kind of a prediction? Wouldn't that be kind of a prediction? And I don't predict. I really don't. Um, I will let price tell me what to do. I will let price tell me what to do. Um, could we? Sure, we could. Could we... Could we just uh, get a crazy wild notion and get to 294 up here? Sure, we could. But do I think we, we are going to test that? That would be predicting. And that just would be wrong. Uh, let's see. Interested in once. I'm always interested in once. Interested in once. There. You know, here's our red-green line. And you can see it's been in a red downtrend and now it's starting in a green uptrend. I like that, uh, Gwen. I like that a lot. Um, let's see here. It's, as far as the T-line channels go, I think it's darling. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, we have a gap right in here. So I can certainly, certainly see why you're interested in that. Um, yeah. Uh, if I, I think what I would have to do is um, probably probably for now use, you know, this low as a stop. And then uh, if it breaks out, then I would be raising that stop just a bit here. This is a nice chart. Uh, put that on, on watch list. <laughs> so far, just about every chart we've looked at are part of the, say the 10. If somebody doesn't have any, I've got a list over here. Uh, we could run through a few, um, but you guys are putting some nice charts up uh, right here. So thank you so much. Uh, let me see. SQ. Trending with a pullback, watching for an entry. Yeah. Um, let me get rid of that right there. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you on SQ. I like I like charts that pull back into the T-line bands here. We've got a nice little bullish Hiromi. Um, I like that a lot. I, I do agree. I think this is a very nice chart here. Right now, uh, targets, well, well, you know, we need to break out of 78. And then we're just going to go look at peaks and valleys. I like that for a nice little target. Also like this area right in here. And I don't know about you, but if I'm buying this, I'm going to be buying an option. And if I bought it, I'd probably be buying in this area right in here. And man, up to that 8750 area, that's a bucket of money. So nice chart. Thank you very much. AG, nice pullback. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it, the, the thing about this right here now is what we're going to need to see is um, the bull step back in. You can see the if you if you take the noise out of it, the daily chart, here's a two day chart, three day chart. Here's a weekly chart. You can see it's doing some really good things. And I think we can clearly see that that would be uh, a pretty decent target uh, to go to up there. So uh, overall, uh, I think that's a pretty nice chart. Daily, there's a gap. I'm just going to put a line in the middle of the gap. You want to watch for that area too because uh, gaps like to get filled. But on the other hand, they also, um, if, they, if it's up enough, then price needs to come back and rest a little bit. But based on the daily chart, I'm going to need to see some buyers, a nice clean or a couple of clean buying candles here. Uh, VWAP, uh, Don or DM, I'm not sure if that's a question for me. I don't see that being a question. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, and I don't, I personally don't use VWAP. Uh, a lot of people do, though. I'm not knocking it. A lot of people use it. Uh, I just don't. Let's see. On your scans. Uh, oh, I see what you're asking. I think I see what you're asking. Where? Well, where are you? Oh, 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 oh. You're back over here on the scanner. Is that right? Yeah. You're back here on the scanner. Okay. That's what you're looking at. So if you're not using this scanner, it really doesn't mean a whole lot to you. But what we're looking at is the current volume versus the average volume over the last 10 days. Uh, for instance, like look at CL, you get into the 130, 140 numbers. That means the current volume is really busting out of the average. Uh, 90 is right knocking on the door of that is what that's doing. I mean, look at ABBA here, 180 or 1.80. So that is really busting out uh, on the average volume. I see now you're, you're talking about the live trading alert scanner uh, is what you're trading, talking about. And that is, like I said, it's, it's the current, the current volume over the past 10 day average at this time of day, by the way, or at the time of the print, you can uh, see where it's, where it's sitting. For instance, if this number was a 0.20, there's a chance I would like it if it's pulled back to support and I see the candle trying to build. Uh, if I can see a nice chart, I will, I will look at that. But if I see, if I see a, a new fresh breakout and we're looking at, I mean, look at AMRN 4.10, that gets my eyebrows up right there. Um, that's something I want to pay attention to, providing it hadn't run away. If it's still a reasonably good buy uh, in an area, then then I'll, I'll look at that. Thanks for asking. Let's see, how does your, let me go up. I think I missed a couple earnings on SQ Thursday. Um, is that earnings? Yeah. JD is one on my list, by the way, I like JD, but it does have earnings. So you definitely want to be careful with that. Let's see, how does your three line regression like work? High, low, close. Um, what, what this is, it is the green and the blue is, this is the linear regression of the T-line high and the T-line low. The red line is the linear regression of the 17 EMA low. Uh, so what I like to see is um, price, is price uh, trend up and pull back. I mean, you have to realize now, 
this is, I've got this only looking at 25 days now. So you, you have to realize because this is up, it would have been right here as well. And there's a nice little pullback and that's, this is about where it would be pulling back. So here we are, you know, we're making some up moves like that. And here we go again, ready to break out. So personally, I like buying inside this area. I like that a lot or just slightly above, especially if we put in a pop out of the box uh, up above or a Fig Newton even, you know, a breakout rest day. Then I look for the positive day. Uh, so that's what I do with it. And it's, it, like I said, the green is the, is the um, 25 linear regression of the T-line high. The blue is the linear regression of the T-line low. And the 17 is the, uh, or the red line, is the linear regression of the 17 low. 20, all 25. Um, no, Bob. It, it's it's not an RBB because it's because it's the RBB is only between the 50 and the and the 200 the 200 right here and the 50 that's it once you break out it is no longer an RBB look right here this would have been a killer setup killer look how we broke out and then we went sideways so there's the breakout one two three days that would have been dynamite right there and pop there it went. So it is no longer an RBB once it breaks out. I'm not saying it's a bad chart. I'm just simply saying we can't call it an RBB. Michael, do you mean these blue lines right here? And I, I'm, I, I'm going to say yes, that's what he means. Michael, these are simply just every chart package has it. Uh, if yours doesn't, I would dump it tomorrow before the market opens and get another one. But it's just simply uh, a horizontal line, and I put them there. I, since that's the only real blue lines I have on here, I'm guessing that's what you mean. Uh, can I look at W? Let's see. Is it easier to put? Wait a minute. It is easier to put $5,100 profit trades uh, than to hit. Oh, oh, I see. No, I see what Mike is saying. Yes, yes, Mike. Mike is saying it's easier to find five $100 trades than it is to hit one $500 trades. Totally agree. Mike and I are like, uh, we, we absolutely agree on the whole base hit thing. Um, I, man, that, that was well said. I'm going to steal that from you. I like that. I've never said it that way. Uh, so Rickster there is saying, look at WDC. And I think WDC is a beautiful chart. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, it is an RBB setup. We've got a nice little pop out of the box right here. You have a little, you could call this a Fig Newton maybe. You could call it a Morningstar maybe. Uh, when it comes to candlestick signals, um, I definitely think out of the box. So that's why I could call this a Morningstar. Uh, somebody that is a uh, little anal retentive with candlesticks would tell me that I'm full of baloney. But, you know, two inches and all. So anyway, I think this is a terrific looking chart. Uh, we're hitting the um, dotted deuce here perfectly. Any kind of a breakout, I would look for a test. I wouldn't be afraid to even buy this uh, as it moves sideways. Your V-stop is looking great. Uh, like I said, I think that's a beautiful, beautiful chart. As far as targets go, you have a gap here to fill. So we better put a line about right there. And then let's come up here and we're going to put one right there, right in here. And then I'm going to drop one on the 200 and then I'm going to go look and I'm happy with price action. So right now that would be my trade up into those areas for that. I do think that's a nice chart. It's one that I've marked to look at tonight if we ran short Let's see, VFF, VFF. You're going to have to ask your question on VFF, Roman. Charts like this, I make people ask the question. So if you ask the question and hurry up, I'll answer. Thoughts on MU. And when you ask your question, I'll then share why I do that. Um, MU, 
is another bullish chart. Uh, I like MU. I'm going to come over here to this right here. I'm going to get rid of those lines. Uh, I think MU is a nice chart. We've been trending up. Low, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. It's just making higher highs and higher lows. Um, and now we're just simply moving sideways. And as we move sideways, that becomes a dream to me. I think that is a beautiful chart moving sideways. Your choice uh, as far as a trade goes, I'm going to move this actually all the way over. Yeah, there we go. You can clearly see we have support in that lower black line. So you could be a buyer inside or you can be a buyer on the outside on a breakout here. So, um, beautiful chart. Thumbs up. I like that, Emu. <laughs> How about Facebook? I actually own some Facebook. And um, I will be buying more Facebook over 162.45. I bought Facebook, uh, not Friday. And I forget exactly which day. One of, you know, actually, I think maybe it was this Wednesday, the 20th, I think, is when I bought it. And, um long as it holds up here uh, above 162, I'm likely to, to buy some more. Uh, it's right at the edge right now. We don't want it to get any lower. But uh, If you're not in Facebook, I would wait till it actually moves up. So uh, up above that 162.45, it takes out uh, this candle's body, this candle body, this candle body, this, this body. And that puts us up in that area where we could start to see, uh, you know, the... the pop whether it's monday tuesday wednesday thursday and then uh a, maybe a test and then that's where it might get really fun uh we'll see um let's see just sharing an idea thank you evan uh, dbd uh, nice chart Look at that beautiful breakout. Look at that great little pop out of the box setting up right here. Look how this thing came right into the T-line bands and popped up. That That is pretty right through there. Absolutely pretty. And you got to remember now, the T-line bands are going to be back here. And because this is low and this is high, I can tell you that it, it will look very similar to this. And this pullback right in here will be would be right inside the band. It'll just be on the hard right edge of it. It's a nice chart. Um, T-line bands, they're just the regression lines of the uh, T-line. So T-line high, it's the regression line. T-line low, it's the regression line. And the red line is the 17 EMA. And this is the regression line of the 17 EMA. You know, the, the purpose that I do this is because Moving averages are all over the place. I mean, good God Almighty, you know they're da 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 da, and this smooths them out. I look for price action anyway, so I don't need to know exactly where the moving average is. All I need to know is it fits within a trap. That's what I like. I like the trap. I like to trap price, and that's what I've done with this. I've trapped price so that it it. it it's kind of what I want to do is I want to I want to trap an animal and then I want to open the gate and I want the animal to run. That's what I want. And I do that by looking for the trapped animal, but I'm also looking for the, you know, the trend. I'm looking for the chart pattern, uh, looking for price action. And then when you open that door, the trap, then you have a nice little move. Uh, again, it's all about probabilities. I mean, this could have easily turned uh south for whatever reason uh there, you know there's hundreds of reasons why it could do that uh so it's all about probabilities uh rook pattern oh let's see Psh, just a second sometimes the chat gets ahead of me here uh cc hey if Ed, if you don't mind, would you draw me a line down there? I see you're in the room. Appreciate that. Uh, Arch is looking at CC. And see this, I mean, talking about, you guys are throwing some beautiful charts out here. This is, I mean, this is fantastic. 
Um, look at that bottom. Boom, boom, boom. You've got a double bottom here. Get my little writing instrument out. You've got a double bottom. You've got a bullish W pattern broken out. You've got a downtrend that has that has reversed up now. And now you've got a trending chart making higher highs and higher lows. Beautiful, beautiful chart. And here's, you know, here's that case where you've got a bearish engulf. Oh my God, look out below. You know, it does pull back. Sure, it says a lower low. Throws us a hammer. Now the bulls are stepping in. Um, I would be bullish probably on a breakout. So I would be looking for uh, a chart pattern that looked like this right here. First in the box. And then what I'd be looking for is a breakout. Test of some sort over three or four days maybe. And then look for buying. And that's when I would look uh, for that buy. If you're already in it, hey, hang with it. Two thumbs up. Let's see, Greg, would you buy a straddle uh, at the money queues looking for uh, volume increase? Um, first of all, Greg, you see that guy up there, Mr. Doug Campbell? He's the options guy. I don't trade straddles. Um, Doug is, in fact, uh, my options coach. Uh, all I trade is directional puts and calls. So... Um, I don't know if he's even here right now. Uh, maybe later on he can answer your question, but uh, I'm going to leave because I'm not qualified for that. And I'll leave that question for uh, Doug if he's here. Uh, otherwise, you know, sorry, I can't help you with that. Um, thought on PCG. Looking for a long option. That, you know, it's really simple. Um, I... Uh, you know, you, you've got a trend here. So what you do is you set your stop in place. And I always, I always want to see, well, what's my risk? Right now, that would probably be my risk. What's my reward? Right there would be my reward. Again, I'm a short-term swing trader, so that's all I can do. And then after that, I would probably look at maybe filling that gap. So I get it. Maybe looking at this for a trade. Um, out of... I, I tend not to trade stocks that are high drama. This is sort of high drama. I tend to stay away from high drama trades. Um, but based on this, just using this chart, I get it. You know, watch for the buyers to come in. Uh, maybe a breakout is what you're looking for. But in that area, uh, I can see that as being a trade. You know, right in through there. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm a base hitter, so I'm taking profits maybe as long as it respects price, respects everything, and uh, respects its high, meaning a very minor pullback. If it just walks along that line, okay, I'll hang on to that second half, and then I'll look maybe for that forty dollar twenty cent level up there. Rick Mel is asking, what pattern is W P M? Um, well, I guess you're, I guess you're talking about this right in here. Uh, this is what I would call a morning star signal. Uh, the three candles right here. Uh, it's also a nice little, uh, J hook in here. You got a J hook breakout right there. Uh, so you've got a trending chart overall. Um, outside of that, I think that's, that kind of covers it. Um, Better pay attention to this top right in here. I'm never afraid of tops. I'm not. Um, but price sometimes is afraid of tops for a very short period of time. So because we're so high and tight right now to that area here, if, if I was in it, maybe, you know, stay in it and just set your stop and manage your trade. But if you're not in it, watch for the breakout and the pullback and test. That, that's what I would do here. The only other way I would look at this is if it pulled back back to here maybe, uh, maybe even here. Then I would look for another run at it toward that top. But like I say, I don't know if you're in it or not. So how you trade this depends whether you're in it or you're not. Let's see. Wall Street Journal reported. Uh, thank you, Gwen. Uh, Ronan, my opinion. I'm going to have to go up and get your chart now. VFF. All right. 
Rona, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't even follow through with that because the only thing I've got to say is crap. That's what I think. Um, I can't in my wildest imagination why anyone, why anyone would not want to trade this chart right now. Um, it is too high up. It is totally out of the ballpark. Um, they have to buy new baseballs to finish this game. Um, that, that's the way I feel about it. Uh, this is a rookie's trade, in my opinion, where you're chasing. You don't want to chase. Uh, the time to have bought this would have been in this area right here or a breakout or this area right here or the breakout. Uh, but now, or, or even, I guess, even in this area maybe, but now it has to do that again. It has to set up. It's much too high, and I just don't think it's a worthwhile trade at this time. So, sorry, honest, just honest. Valerie, we already looked at MU. Nice bullish chart. Uh, Mike, well, maybe, maybe I'm, oops, I did. My bad. I went up too high. Um, Rowan's asking, do I think it topped out? It's got nothing to do with being topped out. It's too high to chase. So it, it could go another $20 higher, but it needs to pull back first. I can't predict whether it's going to go higher. Um, I just know it's too high and the probabilities and it's likely to pull back. So if you are loving this chart, I would wait for a pullback and buy it when the proper chart pattern is set up, uh, is what I would do. So AM, AMRN is uh, on my list. And uh, so the question is, is AMRN still a buy? Well, you know, if your target was right here, no, it's not a buy. Nope. If that was your target. On the other hand, Friday's candle said these bulls are interested. Friday's candle said these bulls are thinking about it. So if your target is that high or higher yet, um, I just want to look at a weekly chart. Yeah. Uh, or 30 bucks or 40 bucks or 50 bucks, then have you missed the trade? Not at all. Not at all. I actually think this is a beautiful chart and it is on my watch list uh, as a trade. So here's the thing about candlestick signals. I, I get asked this often, you know, did, did I miss this trade? And what is, the, what is a breakout like this? What is that? That is simply a clue. That's not the trade. The trade is what comes after that. You know, uh, chart patterns. Chart, chart patterns, let's say a, a ascending triangle. Ascending triangle. That's one of my favorite, favorite chart patterns. So then you get the breakout. You didn't miss the trade. The trade is what happens after the chart pattern is squished by the bulls. And in this case, the chart pattern is squished by the bulls. And in this case right here, the chart pattern has been squished by the bulls. So all this is, is the clue that bulls are extremely interested. So now what I want to look for is some consolidation, a reason to buy it. I like buying on pullbacks with a buy signal. I like buying on um, consolidation, so charts that just move sideways. Things like that. Uh, right here, this is an example of what I might look at. Uh, this right here is an example of what I might look at. Right here is an example. Um, so there's a couple examples right there. So honestly, no, I do not think you missed the trade at all. At all. In fact, I think it's just starting to get good. Let's see. O-M-E-R. Oh, try that again. O-M-E-R. Whoops. Getting late in the night. Uh, O-M-E-R seems ready for a long... I agree. Uh, here you've got a bull kicker. This, this is a bull kicker. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six bars just moving sideways. I'm going to look at a two-day chart, three-day chart. I just want to look at these charts. Yeah. So here's a... There's... I would put a line right here. I'd put a line up into that area. These lines are not, 
they're, they're just to point out, they're just there for me to see where, where to watch price action. So if I started to get some funky price action at those lines, I might have to take profits. If I see the bulls taking control of those lines, I might have to buy or buy more, something like that. Nice chart, by the way. I, I like that. Sun on the long side. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't see that right now. Um, I, I would probably have to wait because, I mean, you've got a gap down here. Um, yeah, you've got a gap down and you've got a high that didn't go anywhere and you actually have a lower low. So uh, the, the truth is here, we could probably do something like this. And now it needs to overcome that. So I probably wouldn't be long till it moved over uh, 3060. And I would be a little bit, you know, nervous until we got over 31. But that's just kind of the way I see it. Let's see. I was late. Um, what are the moving averages? There are no moving averages up there, uh, John. Yeah, these are these are the T-line bands right here. Uh, and they'll be in the recording. You can pick up the recording, and, and I did talk about them a little bit. If the chart setup is really nice prior to earnings, would you still buy and hold? Here's my thoughts on holding through earnings, Mike. If you are a money-making trader, when I say money-making, that means you're making your house payment. You're not working for a living. Um, you take vacations on your on your uh, trading income. Maybe you make a car payment, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe you're sending your kids through college. I don't know. That's what I consider money making. If you're a money making trader, you can hold through whatever you want, and that's because you have paid your dues. You know, you know what could happen. On the other hand. If you are a struggling trader or you're a new trader, you couldn't pay me enough money to hold through earnings unless you have such deep pockets, in which case you would don't need to be working anyway. That is my true opinion on earnings. Earnings is, is one of those things that if you can afford to lose money, go ahead. Go ahead. If you can't, then don't. And it truly is the way I feel about it. Um, earnings is dangerous. Earnings is very, very dangerous. Uh, it can pay off. Uh, I think the truth of it is in the long haul, most people get burned by earnings, I think. Um, so anyway, I hope that was helpful. Probably wasn't the best of answers for most people, but I think it's a truth. So let's see. I think play, play is showing an RBB. Let's see my RBB chart. Yeah, you know, it kind of is and kind of isn't. And I have to admit, since I've started trading options, I've kind of fudged on that, that rule a little bit. Um, but one thing here is I think we're going to need to see a breakout. Uh, on the other hand, I think we're working this way. So, you know, here's the thing. Here, here's where I want to ask myself, are there any better charts out there? I also want to ask myself, what can this chart do for me? And I want to, and by doing that, I can kind of see my risk reward. I mean, your, your risk, I'm not sure what you would look for, for a risk in here. Um, Maybe, I don't know, maybe there. So you've got to ask yourself, there's 5.7%, and then I should have kept that line there. And there is 6.6%. Do you think the risk reward is worthwhile? See, I'm kind of thinking not. Um, on the other hand, if it can get through 53 now I think it's possibly a trade up. That I do think. Because then what will happen is... Then what will happen... Whoa, 
wrong one. Try that again. There we go. Then what will happen is this whole downtrend will be broken. So price will be up here. And now you might have something to trade here. But right now, I just don't think that's a trade. I think your risk reward is, is off tilt a little bit. Little bit. Um, I think there's better trades at the moment. Uh, a week from now, I may totally change. Over 53.90, I you've got something, I think. Um, I don't know where I was here. There we are. Thanks, Ed. Oh, there's my line. All righty. Hey, again, I want to uh, say thank you to everybody, and I appreciate you being here tonight. I really do. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, webinar. And remember, please remember, you can go to the YouTube channel. Now, this link that you on the screen is no good right now because the screen's not hot. Uh, but uh, if you go to this YouTube channel right here, I'll have this recording up tomorrow afternoon sometime. And we'll have it on the um, website uh, under the webinar replays. We'll do that. I want to leave uh, everyone with something here. If you're interested in uh, knowing a little bit more about the scanner, I'm going to post it right in here. There's the scanner. And that's what, you know, I, that's what triggers me to get in. And also triggers me to get out of trades because I also set this up uh, so that there's a set of alerts for trades I'm actually in. So I can watch them, you know, if they start moving down on a 15 minute chart, hourly chart, or whatever time frame you want. Um, next week we'll have the four hour and weekly, ch uh, weekly uh, scanner alerts. Uh, and anyway, um, so if you're interested, there, there's th th that link come through, I guess it did uh, down there. Um, you can check it out and we can talk about this more here. So. Hey, again, everyone, uh, hour and a half, I want to say goodnight to you. Uh, everybody be safe, and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. You guys all take care. Have some pie.